I'm Bella, the maker mama boss lady behind Fiber and Fox, and this is episode 63 of my podcast. Now I have to say, <laughs> a little underprepared, we're trying something different today, trying something different today. Usually I record at night when my children are sleeping, but my son is not very much into working with that schedule right now. So um, yes, my husband's out there, it's Saturday morning and he's doing stuff with the kids and I'm gonna try and record a video, even if I have to do it in segments. We'll see how it goes, but the whole six month old sleeping schedule with the four year old sleeping schedule, it's getting a lot to mesh together. So we're trying, um, but thanks for still being here. I'm Bella, like I said, I'm a crochet designer and I also knit and I talk about it here with you guys. Everything that you need to know about me is linked down below the video and yeah, I will link uh, show notes and everything that I talk about as well. So let's get into it. I, I have show notes, but usually I'm a little more prepared, but this is kind of an impromptu thing, but um, yes. First up, admin. I had done a giveaway um, for 5,000 subscribers, which we're well over now, but um, in the previous episode and the winner didn't claim their prize. And I feel very sad about that because I feel like I'm depriving them of something, but if you don't get in contact with me, I can't send it to you. So I'm gonna redraw again. I'll put it up on the screen. But just a reminder, we have a Notion pouch full of goodies, a stitch marker that I made, some yarn. These are all Connecticut um, items. Some yarn that shows up really blue on screen, but is a pretty purpley, purpley blue. Not as periwinkle as it's showing up um, by Silver Key Stitches, who is a local to me dyer who gifted me this yarn for the giveaway. Um, and also you're gonna get a pattern from me. So I'll put the winner, second winner up on the screen. And if that's you, if you could get in contact with me either on Instagram at fiber.and.fox or through email at bella at fiberandfox.com, then I can send you these things. I would really like to share these lovely spring goodies, uh, Connecticut made with you. And yeah, giveaways are more fun if you actually get to give away the stuff. So. I know it's always hit or miss because I feel like a lot of people who don't normally comment or maybe don't normally watch enter giveaways, but then they kind of ghost on you. So I can't track you down. So if you want your stuff, you have to contact me. So hopefully this goes to someone who regularly watches and I will get it off to you as soon as you get in contact with me. Um, yeah, US only, unless you want to pay for shipping, but you already entered. So I will get this out to somebody soon. Uh, what else did I want to share? My stuff is kind of all over the place right now. I'm normally a little more organized. <laughs> like I said, we're doing this impromptu. What am I wearing? Let's talk about that. I think I showed it to you last time as a finished object, but here, let me move the camera back a tiny bit. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's see. Nope, not quite. <laughs> move you a little more. La, 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 la. Now you can see the edge of my, my light there. Sorry. Oh boy. I know what I'm doing guys. This is the field day cardigan. It is by Ozetta. And I had been having some drama with the yarn colors. You can see the top of the sleeve is slightly different color than the bottom of the sleeve, but I think all in all, it came out pretty good. I'm gonna do a weird sit and talk to you. Hopefully the mic's picking me up okay from over there. But I really like it. This is my first mohair garment. And as you can see, it's a little bit of a boxy, boxy cropped fit. Um, I more or less did it to pattern. <laughs> I don't remember if I made any major changes and I, I do know how to button, um, but apparently not on camera. <laughs> so we're just going to leave it open, but it hits like, this is my belly button here. So it pretty much hits right at my belly button and looks cute with a crop shirt or high waisted jeans and yeah, a nice little spring layer. So I'm bringing it back. Okay. That's about where we were, I think. So I'm glad to have this done. I'm glad to have it in my spring wardrobe and I'm wearing it with, I, I have a shirt on underneath, but it's short sleeved and the mohair isn't bothering me. I was a little worried that my arms, that it would, but it doesn't actually bother my wrists. As soon as my body like temperature warms up the sweater, it's actually quite comfortable and it doesn't even bother me. At, like I can feel it like tickling me on my neck, but it's not giving me like welts or anything, which sometimes uh, certain fibers do. So <laughs> this is, I'm pleased with it. And, uh, I've talked about it a bunch in previous podcasts if you want to know about it, but my daughter and I hand dyed the brown yarns with shag bark hickory hulls from our yard. And then I held it double with mostly fiber for the people, a one of a kind mohair um, in colorway wood smoke. And then I ran out and I used some hobby yarn to finish it off in, I forget what color, but it's similar, but not the same. But I think from a distance it reads fine and the stripes are subtle and I like it. And it has really pretty buttons. <laughs> Things are going well out there. Um, so yeah, that is what I am wearing. 
And then let me share, I have a little bit of design news. Today is gonna to be the day where we just move the camera around awkwardly. Um, but yeah, the Dandelion Days cowl is released. Uh, not Maybe not my most seasonally appropriate release. It's a little bit on the chunkier side, but wanted to get it out. First pattern of the year. Ooh, that's doing weird things to the colors. <laughs> um, but yes, it is a button cowl. That is a blue fuzz. We'll get that off of there. Button cowl uh, in a bulky weight yarn and dandelion stitch. So there's a pattern drop video on that if you didn't catch that already. Yeah, we can leave her there. That's Bowen. Okay, so that works. I'm sorry about all the moving about, but again, that's what we're doing today. So that is my latest design, and then I'm working on something new. I had really hoped to have it finished to show you, but we kind of ran into a yarn debacle. So I had had yarn, I had purchased yarn for this a while back. And then I ended up using the yarn in a couple different projects. And I think I made sweaters. Yeah, I made matching sweaters for my, my son and daughter for like our Christmas card photo shoot. So I used up some of the yarn, but I was like, eh, it's commercially dyed. The skeins that I had weren't even the same dye lot to begin with. And they, they looked pretty much the same. Um, so I was like, I can just go back to Hobby Lobby and get more. So it's this yard, yarn, uh, yarn B Bamboo. And it is a 50% cotton, 50% viscose from bamboo. And it is a DK weight. Um, yes, three, DK weight. And this is the color Cognac. And I really like this yarn. I will say it is very, um, let's see if I can find an end to show you. It's on the, on the splitty, splitty side of things. Because it's, it's ever so slightly, like it's twisted together, but I wouldn't say it's really like plied. It's very loose. So it's hard to show you and focus. Hang on. Like it's just very loose. You're, you can't see that. I can't do it with two hands. I'm sorry. But it's a loose construction. Um, and both knit and crochet, I've used it. And I really like it. And I like the finished product. And I like the drape of it. Um, but it can be a little bit of an adjustment getting used to just because it's so loosely plied that you can easily split the yarn. Um, but I don't, that doesn't deter me. As long as I, I kind of get in a rhythm with it, it's fine. So I had started as a, a design. Um, I've been talking about starting a Ruana type design for quite some time. And I got it started. And then I ran out of the yarn and I was like, okay, I have to go back to Hobby Lobby and get some more. It'll match good enough. Um, and the garment's gonna be in pieces anyway, so I can kind of make it work. But then they were completely out of it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, was it discontinued? Thankfully it's not, it's still available, but um, it was one of the weeks, Hobby Lobby every three weeks does like a 30% off on yarn. And it was yarn sale week. And for some reason, the entire store was like wiped out. So I don't know if they're getting new stock or what's going on at my local Hobby Lobby, but um, I had started, but then I ended up changing the gauge. So I was like, whatever, I'll just start again. And I ordered from the site. I mean, you can't, I think, maybe this one is a little more yellow. I was like, yeah. Oh well, yeah, you can tell on screen, they are slightly different. Um, so I was like, yeah, I can use what I have and then just carry on. But I decided to start over just so I have now all the same dye lot. I bought like a preposterous amount of skeins because my daughter wants one too. Um, so I'll probably end up frogging out the first one using that yarn to make one for my daughter and then um, one for myself. But it's ultimately gonna be a Ruana design which is gonna be only in adult sizes. I don't think I'm gonna include children's sizing, but. Um, <laughs> in the middle of a row. It's crochet, and if you're not familiar with a Ruana, it's basically like one of those big blanket shawls. Um, sometimes it's joined in the underarms and sometimes it's just open. Um, so it's basically a blanket that goes over your shoulders. And I really like them. I wear them probably three seasons out of the year. And I found that they're a great throw over piece. They're great if I need to like have a quick blanket <laughs> kind of situation. And I also really like them. It's not necessarily a nursing cover but I really like them for nursing as well, um, just cause it's kind of a big blanket thing um, without having to carry around a swaddle or something. Um, so yeah, if in a situation where that might be necessary, I like to have one of those. Um, so I'm creating a Ruana. I'm not sure, <laughs> not, I have kind of a funny name in mind. I don't know if I'm gonna end up using it, so I won't, won't say it yet, but um, yeah, it's gonna be in this stitch. It's at the back. Yes, that's the back. Let's show you the front. It's showing it more greenish brown on camera, but it's it's a warm brown. And I've used this yarn in a ton of things, and I really like both this color and this yarn. So it's, you can see it's a nice open 
gauge. So it's going to be like a summer, spring, fall weight. Um, and we could definitely wear it in the winter too. Um, but I'm hoping to write this up in, I usually size up to 3X. Um, but I think this pattern, it's probably going to be a couple sizes combined, like maybe small and medium together, large, extra large, because it's not like a super well-fitted garment. It's kind of just a big blanket shawl thing. Um, but I would still have a very size inclusive range and yeah, I'm going to write, write it up eventually, uh, taking all my notes and stuff. It's not very exciting to see now, but, um, I'm glad to have the yarn now to keep going on it. I wanted it done for Easter so I could wear it with another thing that I'm going to show you in a second, but that's not going to happen because I just got the yarn yesterday. <laughs> so, and Easter is a week away from what I'm filming. So I am going to keep working on that and stay tuned for tester calls and the like on that in a while. It's going to take me a while to write it up, but I think overall it's going to be a pretty straightforward pattern and mostly just rectangular stuff, not a lot of crazy shaping or anything. So stay tuned for a summery, springy, fally Ruana situation. I have a couple finished objects. Um, kind of all over the place on what I've been making here. We have some very wintry objects. We have some very summery objects. Um, what I have, ooh, do I have the yarn label? Let me grab that. Yes. All right. Um, this here, I will maybe put in a video or photo of me wearing it because it's going to be hard to show you. It looks kind of uneventful right now. But this is the split back tank. And I realized that, um, probably could look on my phone, but I don't even see my phone here because again, unprepared. Uh, but this is a Knit Picks pattern. It's free on the Knit Picks website, but I will have to put in the actual designer of who is responsible for this pattern. But it is a knit pattern um, and it is originally written in, I think, I think it's fingering weight, um, Knit Picks Kotlin. I think that's the name of the yarn. Um, but I used a different yarn and I actually used DK, so I ended up tweaking the gauge a little bit because, you know, why would I just follow a pattern? Uh, but this is a long, not long like tunic or anything, but past my waist, um, open back knit pattern. And I've seen, when I was posting it on Instagram, some people were like, mm, could you close up the back? And I suppose you could make a panel and close the back if you wanted to. There's some projects on Ravelry where people have closed it with like a crochet panel. But again, I was really excited about the open back. I'm gonna have a tank top or camisole underneath it anyway. Um, and for nursing, I'm really excited about the looseness of the bottom of this garment because I'm very much a bottom up kind of person. Um, this is, this is just the stage of life I am in right now. Um, balancing babies around a podcast and nursing. That's, that's what I do these days. So, uh, I'm excited about this for summer and it's a cotton linen, I think. Yep. Linen cotton, 77% linen, 23% cotton. And it's, of course, this is the one that's covering the label, but I think it's Nina by, I think it's S Charles. Yeah. I can see through the back S Charles can't read the rest, but I got this uh, marked down in a local yarn shop. And I have, what color? This is color 18. Um, I have it both in uh, like a burnt orange color and then this rusty red as well. So I might make another of the same garment, might make something else, um, but I bought six of each. And it's made in Italy um, for Taki Yarn, Stacy Charles. Um, so that's, I don't know if this is a discontinued, a lot of times her clearance yarns are discontinued, but I really like it. I really love this color. It's showing up a little more red on camera. Um, it's a little more like a poppy red, maybe like an orangey red. Um, but more or less I followed the pattern. I <laughs> tweaked the gauge. So I was making the, I think normally the medium or the large would have fit me bust wise. Um, but because I was using DK weight yarn and I changed the needle size, I did the small. Um, and then I followed it. Uh, it's knit kind not in pieces. It's knit in one piece, but um, yeah, kind of. There's some parts where you split off, obviously, because it's a tank top. But it has a very simple front. It's very drapey, loose. I don't know if you can see the gauge, but yeah, very open. So I would definitely be wearing something underneath it regardless. And then the back is the split, split opening. Um, and the only thing that I really modified is I, I think the pattern called for single crocheting around the neckline and the, come on, I don't like the red. Focus. There we go. Neckline, single crochet around the neckline and the armholes, which I did. Um, but then I also ended up, oh no, I did other modifications. I remember now. I ended up single crocheting across the back panel as well. And it created kind of this eyelet situation. And then I did like a little lacy, lacy bottom 
thing here too. I'm sorry, this is very hard to show. Just a little lace bit on the bottom. And then the only other major modification is if you can see along the edge of the split in the back, this edge, and then the bottom hem as well um, was originally garter. And I did, I don't, I don't like my knitting in garter. It just looks like amateur and like I just learned. Um, so this I did like a uh, seed stitch, moss stitch, where you knit on the pearls and purl on the knits and alternate. Um, and I think it has a nice finish to it. Again, this is very difficult to show. But I'm very excited to have this in my wardrobe. I am planning to wear it on Easter, though it's gonna only be like 50 something degrees, so we'll have to see. Um, having the Ruana would have been nice, but I'll have to throw <laughs> my, my Fields cardigan, uh, which is my design. I have one in like basically the exact same color, Chili um, by Fiber for the People, so I could wear a very red outfit on Easter. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll wear my yellow Fields cardigan or something with it. But yeah, overall, pleased with this. Um, I think I was knitting on like size, I guess nines or tens, something that was very huge. Um, even for like a DK weight, it was a very large gauge. And I think it originally called for like an eight or something in the pattern with the fingering weight. So it's a very, very loose gauge and the needles felt so clunky in my hands like I had never knit before because I'm so used to working with like size one, size two, <laughs> maybe up to size four, but yeah, size 10, 11, whatever it was, um, it was, it was clonkety. But um, overall, easy knit, glad I did it, free pattern. And yeah, I might make another one in another color because I'm very excited to have this fit of a garment. It's got kind of an A-line bottom because of the split and um, yeah, it's really pretty. So I'm excited to have that for summer and spring, spring and summer, fall, etc. What else do I have? Finished objects. I also have a very wintry item. <laughs> Uh, we went on a walk earlier this week and my son lost, we recovered it, but my son lost one of his booties that I had made for my daughter. So it was kind of like, not an heirloom piece because I made it myself, but um, we lost one of the booties and <laughs> my dedicated mother went back and walked the tra trail twice until she found it. So we regained it, but he's very much in the kick off his socks, pull off his shoes, he doesn't wear shoes, but like booties. Um, phase where he just, I put him in the car seat and immediately he pulls everything off and then he laughs and I'm like, oh, it's still kind of cold out, bud. You need some on your feet. Um, so yes, keeping things on his feet has been difficult. Um, but after we lost one of the booties, I was like, oh, we should have a backup pair. Um, so I made another pair of booties and he's in this funny stage where he's only six months old. He's I mean, headed towards seven months, but he's the size of at least an 18 month old. So like the things that fit him um, like baby, baby shoes don't fit him. And he has very chonky feet, like big, pudgy, puffy feet, adorable, but, um, very wide, very high, not high arched. It's not even arched. They're totally flat, but just puffy little marshmallow feet. Um, so a lot of shoes are not comfortable on his foot. So I've been mostly doing booties and just socks and I'm looking forward to summer. Um, and he's not crawling or walking at this point, so he doesn't need anything substantial on his feet. So booties are, are good, but keeping them on is hard. So I made another pair and I will again have to put in the designer because I think it's a Scandinavian designer. Um, this is a pattern that was in a couple different languages um, translated into English. Um, but it's very cute. A good little structured booty. Stands up on its own. So it's not quite a sock. Um, it was written for Aran weight yarn. We're having a hard time focusing today, aren't we? There we go. Uh, written for Aran weight, but I was actually holding it double in um, a worsted weight that I'm not even sure what the yarn is. Somebody gave it to me recently. They were helping a friend clear out their house and I always get the yarn hand-me-downs. Um, so I think it's an acrylic with maybe like 10% wool in it. It definitely has a little bit of wool content to it, um, but I didn't have tags or anything for it, so I have no idea. It's a little wooly, but definitely has some acrylic going on. So it's a simple garter stitch on the bottom, nice and cushy. Um, and these are, they fit him, but I probably could have made them bigger. So I think I'm gonna make another pair in a larger needle size. These were on size seven, I think. Um, and it's a very dense fabric, because again, I was holding it double and that wasn't called for. But I was trying to make an infant size booty larger for my <laughs> my son without doing too much measurements and trying on because that's, that's just too tricky. So these only took me like a day. So I will probably whip, whip up another pair um, in another scrap sort of yarn because we're in 
a transitional like winter spring kind of some days it's 65 and some days it's 46 and we're out about um, doing walks and going to playgrounds and stuff a lot. So he does need something on his feet. And he still has like a snowsuit that's one piece that fits him, but he's too long for it. So I can't put his feet in it anymore. Um, so they like cuff up and then his little feet stick out. So he needs something on his feet. So we're doing booties. Um, very simple, free pattern. It's the first thing that comes up when you search baby booties on Ravelry, I think. Um, free pattern, really simple, knit two together decreases. Um, so this would be a great baby shower gift um, and you could definitely jazz them up a little bit if you wanted to do fun colors or add a pom-pom or something, but very nice uh, Either gender cute stays on cuffed a Little booty pattern, so I thought I would share those probably gonna make another one soon um, And yeah, I think that's it for the finished objects, right? Yes, the rest is whips we're moving right along here. I think we're doing okay. I'm sorry it's a little scatterbrained, but I am a little scatterbrained, so welcome. <laughs> welcome to my life. And the next whip, I'm not even sure if it's worth showing you because <laughs> it's just a little smidge of a thing. Um, but I started on my favorite uh, baby cardigan pattern for little girls. My cousin is pregnant and is expecting a girl in, I think, August. Um, so I started on a little yoked cardigan. <laughs> <laughs> this is all I have, so it's not much to show you, but this is the Lace Cardigan by Mon Petit Villon. My best attempt at a French accent. And I thought I had this skein, yes. This is another Hobby Lobby. I picked it up when I went for the cognac yarn. Yarn Topia, I've not worked with this one before. It's the colorway Anchor, and it is 100% acrylic, and it's very kind of, it reminds me of like a Karen Simply Soft, that shiny, slightly shiny one, but it's a little, Less acrylic-y feeling, I guess. Um, a little less squeaky. Um, and it's a sport weight. Yeah, so. Camera. You have one job, camera. One job. Okay. There we go. So I'm working that up um, in no particular rush. I just needed a project when I was waiting on the other yarn to come in the mail. And I only ever had the next... I only ever the only other thing I had was the project I'm going to show you next and that requires a little con concentration so I needed a simple project to work on and I've made this cardigan probably at least seven times by now I've made a bunch for my daughter and it's my favorite little girl gift knit um, and I tend to modify it a little bit at this point but yes so making that for my cousin and hopefully she will like it she's not a very girly girl um, which neither am I. So it took me a while to work into the My daughter is now very much hot pink and all of that But <laughs> I was very much let's have neutral colors and grays and greens and <laughs> Yeah She likes sparkles and rainbows and little girly things and that's totally fine um, But I know my cousin is more of a neutral farmhouse kind of vibe So I hope she'll like that gray And then I have a more exciting More exciting thing going on here these are, these are very exciting. And of course I'm in the middle of a row as well, but we can, we can make it work. So these are the herding cat socks. I've been hyping this up for a while. I've been wanting to knit these socks. I've been talking about color work socks. I got that one other pair under my belt. Um, herding cat socks by Stone Knits. And they are by no means perfect. Um, and I think, so there's, I think three sizes in the pattern and Working color work, your gauge is a little different. I didn't do a gauge swatch. I'm not color work swatching a sock. Um, but I picked the second size because I think the cast on amount was just ever so slightly more than what I normally would do. So I was like, okay, usually I do about a 60 stitch sock. Um, and the cast on was a couple stitches more. So I was like, okay, that'll fit. Um, but then I didn't realize there was actually some increases that happened after the cuff to accommodate the color work chart. Um, so now we're at more stitches this is a paid pattern and it's when i read a little closer it says in the pattern that it fits a women's like eight and a half foot and i have like a six and a half seven so this is going to be more like a boot slipper sock situation um but i'm also knitting it on a half size small so i don't know they're going to be a little big but it's going to be all right but we got we got floats all around inside it's all over color work um and i have some thoughts about that in the future um, oh, I have a one-eyed cat here. I missed, missed an eye on that cat. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, but the pattern is written to be in every line of cats. is supposed to be a different color. And I had originally picked out, I think, seven different mini skeins to go with the purple. 
and then I just decided I didn't want to change colors that much and I liked the contrast between these two. So this is what we're doing. The main purple is, I've had this teen for a little bit, but Sassy Black Yarns, who is another Connecticut dyer. I pick this up at like a trunk show at a local yarn store. And the colorway is Extravaganza, which purple is not a color that I think of when thinking of eggs, but um, maybe there's a reason behind this. I don't know. But it's a very happy, lovely purple. She dyes really, really gorgeous purples. I think every, every no, I think I've gotten pink from her too, but um, most of the yarns that I have purchased from her have been purple shades. And the contrast color is one that my daughter and I dyed camera what are you doing today um my daughter and I dyed with some leftover tie-dye kit when we were dyeing some onesies for my son so two colors goodness is it trying to focus on the mannequin is that the problem I don't normally we don't have this issue so I don't know what it's doing and the colors perfectly match my little notions pouch delightful um so yeah instead of doing seven different colored rows of cats I'm just going with the yellow and the purple so I think that's pretty and I don't know that I like all over color work. I think I do like color work socks. The other pair that I did had color work at like the top of the cuff and then at like right before the toe. Um, when I talk about that in the last episode, and I really liked those. Um, and I like how they fit and I like how they feel. But I think all over color work, I've run into a couple issues. First of all, it's kind of monotonous doing the same chart over and over again. The other pair of socks was like a, I don't know, like almost like a mandala kind of lacy looking. Every row was different. And I don't, I don't think there was any repeats in the chart. I think it was like a 30 or 40 row long color work situation. This is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten or so rows, 10, 12 rows per cat. And then it's the same cat throughout the whole, or this. Nope, just kidding. The chart is this. So there's a cat facing this way and then a cat facing the other way and then it repeats. It's very repetitive. I have not memorized it though, because it's just ever so slightly long enough that I still have to check the chart, because um, I don't want to end up with cats going the wrong way. Um, but I added accidentally an additional cat, so this row of cats, it was only supposed to be three on the top before the heel. Um, and I've started on the foot, and I don't remember how many are in the foot, but I'm gonna make it until it fits me. But what I don't like in particular, I think about color work all over socks, is that I have to do a short row heel. And it's not that I don't like, yes, this side's worse. <laughs> this side's a little better. I don't mind executing a short row heel, but they do not fit me well. I am very much a heel flap and gusset sort of person. So the other pair of socks with the color work on the top and on the bottom, I was still able to do a short row, or a heel flap and gusset heel. Um, because I didn't have to maintain the chart over the arch of my foot. Um, but this, obviously, you have to keep the stitch count the same so you can not be, like, hacking limbs off of poor little cats. That sounds so sad. Um, but, yeah, to maintain the chart, I needed to do a short row heel. And I don't, I don't like them. <laughs> and I didn't think about that when I casted it on, because normally I'll just sub out the heel that I like. But then, yeah, as I got to it, I was like, oh, yeah, color work, going to have to gonna have to kind of follow the pattern. So hopefully because it is a bigger sock, it will fit over the arch of my foot well. Um, I did not, I don't do great. This wasn't, this wasn't wrap and turns or German short rows. It was just like work the short row heel. So I don't know what this particular one is called, but I definitely have, this side's a little tighter, but the side where I was doing, I think pearl decreases is definitely gappier and I'm gonna have to go back through and sew it up. But yeah, I'm kind of slogging away on these at this point because I'm kind of overworking the chart and I have a whole second sock and normally I don't get sock, in, sock syndrome as we call it in the biz. Um, but yeah, so I think from now on, there's a ton of other stone knit patterns that I would like to do, um, but I'm either going to just work the color work on the top and on the bottom or look for patterns that only have top and bottom. So I don't want to do any more all over unless it's a very different design throughout instead of a short repeat. But I think these are these are very cute and I think they'll they're a little wonky right now, but I think they'll block out okay. I'm trying to tension as best I can. I run into some issues where the needles meet like the sides worse. Kind of like you'd get laddering with like DPNs. 
my tension on carrying the yarn over between the two needles is a little funny, but I think with blocking it'll be okay. And again, it's just socks and I'm trying to learn how to do this, but I'm really happy with the yellow and purple contrast because I've had some rough times on picking good contrasting colors, but I think that's really nice and sharp and crisp and you can see those cute little cats. So that is the herding cat sock. And yeah, not only do I love cats, but I also feel like my life sometimes is a little herding cats, small children, cats, they're all kind of, <laughs> kind of similar in that they want to do their own thing. Um, so yes, I'm excited to have those, but in my year of learning how to do color work socks, I'm gonna make some changes now that I have made those. So I think, I think that, wow, we only did 30 minutes and we talked about all those things. Wow, look at us go and nobody's crying. So, so it's good. Um, yeah, so I guess I will see you in the next episode. If you are the giveaway winner, please make sure that you contact me so I can send you goodies um, and you'll get your pick of one of my patterns as well. I'm going to keep working on my Ruana and hopefully I will have a design for you sometime soon. And I think the video is going to go up before Easter, so I hope you have a happy Easter. Um, we are just going to be celebrating all of our families pretty local. So locally with family and church and all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, I hope you have a great wonderful, blessed Easter, regardless. And I will talk to you guys soon. I think, yeah, I'm gonna keep working on some more summery, springy patterns. Maybe I'll finish that sock. I don't know if I'm gonna finish the second sock. I will, cause I'm not gonna just have one sock. I will do the other one. I don't know if I'm gonna cast it on immediately, but I'm not gonna let myself cast on any other socks until I finish it because we need rules around here. But yeah, I can't believe I got a podcast done on Saturday morning and still, still need to edit that room tour. But we're doing what we can here. So thank you for being here for it. Thank you for your support of the channel and liking and subscribing and purchasing designs and commenting on Instagram. Instagram algorithm is just down the tubes with my posting. But um, yeah, I appreciate you guys sticking around. You the faithful. You're great. And if this is your first time, I didn't welcome you, but thank you for joining me. And I hope you will join me in episode 64 as well. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.